Welcome to the Dorian of your show. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you your host, Dorian of Well, it is a beautiful time to be here today. And of course, to you, my lovely audience, thank you so much. And to you watching out there, today we are discussing something quite interesting. So we are looking at the local recognition of artists in Ghana. And we are looking specifically at visual artists. Let's take a quick break and look at this video. When we come back, my guest will join me here. It's the Dorian Avio Show. Welcome back. This is the Dorian Avio Show. And my guest for today is a complete artist. And when I say a complete artist, he's into painting, sculpting, um, set designing. The list is just endless. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Prince Kojo Hilton. <laughs> Ah. Prince, I, I'm sure I, I was listed, but maybe I, I got stuck somewhere. And uh, can you help me? I'm sure there are quite a number of things you do in addition to what I mentioned. I'm a filmmaker. I, I work as an art director, mm. a production designer. I'm mm. a scenic artist. Um, I'm also a special effect artist. You watch movies, they stop someone, they gunshot, you know, cut heads and all that. So I create props as well for films. Wow. So I do a lot. Wow. I, I design stage for fashion shows and, and stuff too. Everything. Hmm. Everything. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> so you can cut. Can you cut somebody's head for me? Straight up. <laughs> now, Prince, what do you need to be a visual artist? Visual art actually is is a gift. I believe it's it's a talent, um, God given talent, uh, where if you discover that you have that ability, you just have to polish it up. So either go to school or go through apprenticeship, um, but there should be an education along the lane, along the, your way going or growing. Mm. So um, it's a gift. Like myself, I started drawing when I was very little, and um, I found out that this is what I can do and can do best. I, I can close my eyes and paint. When I'm sad, I paint. I want to just create. You know, that's, that's what makes me happy. Yeah. At what point did you decide that this is what I want to do for a career? For me, I saw that when I was in primary school. Primary? Yeah, like what, way class? Back in, Maybe six? No, four. Four? Yeah, primary four. Um, there was a time a new teacher entered class and began to ask, hey, what do you want to become in future? He said, a doctor. He said, wow. Um, you? He said, a nurse. Whoa, good. You, engineer. He got to me, I said, I want to be a painter, an artist, a painter. <laughs> Sit down, next. Uh, that's what the teacher told me, a painter. <laughs> Sit down, next, meaning a painter is nobody. That day I was so sad, I got home and started thinking, started even researching when I was little. That, ah. But artists, they create, they make things happen. So the next day, I went back to school and told the teacher that I will become the world's greatest artist. Wow. Well, I just said it. But when I was growing, I realized that this that I just said with my mouth is beginning to manifest. Wow. Yes. So we, we, might, we, we must be very mindful of what we say 
upon ourselves. Mm. Yes. Uh, I believe keep saying positive things to yourself and to manifest. Everybody. Yeah, manifest. Yeah. Mm. Now, do you think that um, Ghanaians in general do not appreciate the arts? Now, you have been through that process. And at this point of your life, you, as you said, you're a world icon. You're doing amazing. People love your work. Do you still think that Ghanaians do not appreciate the art? Um, initially, uh, it wasn't that much uh, appreciated uh, because people only see artists as painters. They paint walls or they do sign writing. And you, anytime you see an artist, his clothes are dirty, you see paint and all that. But now you can see artists even wear suits. Artists travel a lot. My colleagues, they travel a lot. Myself, I travel a lot. Anytime I organize exhibitions and do stuff, represent Ghana in other countries. And now you can see that the trend is changing. And what I would want to add is encouraging our young folks, our kids, to understand that art is not only about drawing and painting. An artist must be dynamic. You... Um, you don't have to learn to be a sculptor or a painter. You should learn to be a creator or an inventor. That's the word. Wow. I don't just paint. I paint to solve problems. Mm -hmm. Now, considering the kind of works you're doing, I mean, you said some of your colleagues are also into it and all. Uh, do you have enough support for you all to be able to put, or enough, I mean, enough structures to be able to put out these great works? Great. Um, for support, for a very long time, it's, it's not coming. Even when we're in school. You can remember, in senior high school, those studying visual arts are not regarded. They don't have studios, but the science students have a science lab yep. with computers and all that. But you go to the visual art department, there's nothing. They do their works, and you realize it's just somewhere, you know? So um, since that time, the support hasn't been there. But that's another thing I'm also pushing, okay, to have the government see that aspect of the economy. Mm. Museums, um, film studios, you know, these areas, you know, art made America, America, what it is today. Hollywood is a, a, a group of artists, you know. So if the government will see art as a form of development, I believe um, they will start investing in the art and things will change, move on to another level. Wow. Yes, I believe. Well, we are hoping that will happen. But of course, I would like you to discuss or share with us some of your popular works you've done. Uh, I'm sure, I know the list is yeah. endless, but I'm sure there are a few ones that can come can, to can mind. Remember, and, yes. Um, okay, for movies, let me take you back, 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 back. For movies, I, I worked on Dons of Sakawa. Do you remember that film? Where Majid Michel and John Dumelo and Prince David went for Sakawa and they went to the um, cemetery. You ah. know, to <laughs> so I was the art director for that movie, in that movie. And then Chelsea, you remember Chelsea? When movie Chelsea. Majid Michel was an artist. So I did every artwork in that film. I designed the look and feel of the film. You watch uh, who? <laughs> yes, you watch the film, Who Loves Me? That one too, Majid was an artist. He painted Jackie, Apia, and Kasum Sinari mm -hmm. in that film. And I was a set designer in that movie. I worked on Beast of No Nation as a scenic artist. Um, yeah. Yeah, there were films I did, a couple of films I did, worked as a special effect artist. I bent a house in a movie with a technique called uh, model making. So I created a model of the exact house that was used for the filming, and then I, I, I set it ablaze. And if you see it on the camera, it looks like the real house is getting bent. Wow. So I uh, worked on that too. And uh, okay, in 2012, I created the first ever man made volcano in Africa uh, for the Guinness Big Eruption concert. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I have worked with Uncle Lebo White several times. Um, most of his play, I think that from the day one, 2008, when he started, I, I was doing makeup. So I transformed most of the characters to play. A man can transform a young man to an old man. 
Um, if you've seen some of his play, what that left behind, the devil in the mirror, uh, Mr. President, your moves. Um, Oh. Wow. And it, then I had a chance to also work with Hollywood and I was going to ask that. Mm. Yes, um, I was employed by Jean Claude Van Damme to oh, work. You mean yeah, Van Damme? John Van Damme, yes. The Van Damme. Yes. Which are? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I wanted to do that sound, but I, I didn't know how to go about it. Which are? Uh -huh. <laughs> Van Damme? Yes. Um, Madorin, I mean, before he continues, he says something about Uncle Lebo White mm -hmm. transforming people from. Like being young to old. Yeah. Can you do something about DKB's head? <laughs> it's, it's actually on mine. That is fixed. You can do something about that it. That is fixed. You can but, but we can do something. Ah. We can give him a body that will fit the head, but not reducing the head. His neck is. Yeah, we can add more body <laughs> so that body will fit the head. The head. <laughs> wow, Van Damme. Yes. Uh, so on that set, I worked as a scenic artist. I created the look and feel of the main character Sky in the film. The film is called Sense 8. You can Google it to see. It was, shot in, it was shot in eight countries, and I happened to work on uh, the Kenyan version of Sense 8. So if you watch the film, it was my idea as to how the car should look, the main character Sky should look for the film. Um, I created fake bullets that was used in the movie. I created, uh, yes, that's the film that I transformed a donkey to look zebra in the film. Wow. Yes. <laughs> By the grace of God. <laughs> I mean, oh. look, when you look at all these works you have done, how does it make you feel? Yeah, I I feel good, but I'm still not fulfilled because I always want to see a brighter future. So I have been killing myself now to work or develop the youngsters to enjoy tomorrow. Wow. Yeah, so I have, for like 12 years of my life, I have dedicated my life to train young artists. I came up with a program called VASEP, Visual Art Students Empowerment Project, mm -hmm. and I taught senior high schools uh, to train them in other aspects of the arts. Um, I'm a visual artist, but I went to film school. I'm a, I'm a NAFTA graduate. Mm -hmm. I studied art direction and production design. Wow. You know, and I take them through some of the um, prospects in the area of art. And when they see my documentaries, they're like, Mr. Hilton, I want to become a special effect artist, I want to become a storyboard artist, I want to become, you know, initially art syllables we learned in senior high school limits art to only drawing and painting. And even if you are doing sculpting, it, it should get to a level that your sculpture piece should be able to be animated mm and feature in the film. Mm. But most of our sculptors here in Ghana, they model the thing and the end bit of it is having it somewhere and that's it. Hmm. I will tell you a secret after this break, but I've been hanging out here with Prince Kojo Hilton. He's a, an artist, I'll just a, a complete artist. That's how I'll call him. We're gonna go on a quick break. When we come back, we will unveil one of his creative works. It's the Darren Avio Show. Welcome back from the break. Before the break, I had been talking to Prince Kojo Hilton, who happens to be a complete artist. That's how I choose to describe him, because he does a number of things. And well, before the break, we also told you about how we are going to unveil one of his creative works. So I, I think we are all ready. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. All right, let's go. is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. This painting is titled Amanoa. Uh, it's a, a Ghanaian local name. Mm. Um, but then it's an acronym to this piece, uh, which is Art Movement Against Novel Coronavirus Upon Africa. Mm. Um, like I said earlier, I, I paint to um, solve problems. So this is one of the problems I tackled last year and um, we're still pushing it. I see a nurse. Yeah. Uh, I see a shield. Mm. 
I see a sword. Yeah. I see people seated with masks. I see an ambulance. Yeah. Um, I see, should I say a rock, <laughs> cracked rock? Yeah. I see a skull of a sea cemetery. Uh -huh. I see quite a number of things here. Great. So this is Amanoa. Um, there are a lot of elements, hidden or coded elements in this painting. Um, on my extreme left, I call the, um, the tragedy. And then on my extreme right, is what I call hope. So the painting is divided into two. Um, there are a lot of elements here. You can see a nurse fighting the virus. Uh, you can see down there, you can see graveyard, uh, which shows or represents um, death or um, you know, a lot of people died during last year when this mm. thing came. You could see a skull which represents fear. So this, uh, last year, we were in a moment of fear it was quite tough and due panic. To COVID you know, yeah. so I, honestly, this work is to celebrate the hard work of the health workers and the frontliners who sacrificed their lives to help this um, virus or COVID situation. It looks, it looks as if they have been neglected. Uh, there's no appreciation to these people, the health workers, the frontliners, ever since this COVID thing happened. Mm. And it's been very challenging for them. Um, I'm going to, there will be a time we'll fully explain this work. Mm fully exhibited here in this studio, mm. where you can come, then I'll give you the full detail of the things or the elements, hidden, the hidden codes that we need to decode in this painting. Wow. Okay. So that's it. That's a manual for you. I mean, before we go on the break, I know you are also an ambassador. Sure. Briefly tell us what you are. Okay. What I, exactly you do. I was appointed the Pan-African Arts Ambassador uh, the year 2019, um, based on the projects I've been working all, all these years for the past 12 years mm. as I encourage and empower young artists across Africa. I've done this in South Africa, in Gambia, in Equatorial Guinea, uh, in Nigeria, and empowering and training young artists and you know, grooming them to fit into the next world mm. that they can you know, be happy. Well, this is a beautiful piece, and I'm really excited to see this. Um, what you do not know about me is that I studied visual arts in school, but Whoa. I can't even hold a paint, <laughs> let alone put this together. This is beautiful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been hanging out here with a complete artist. I call him Prince Kojo Hilton. He's amazing, and this is his work. We're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, it is a celebrity hangout. It's the Dorin Avio Show. Welcome back. It's the Dorin Avio Show. And of course, I'm having a good time. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready, let's welcome actor James Gardner. Oh, 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 oh. Said I look fabulous and I'm feeling good. I don't know about <laughs> Varuski. He hasn't said anything. He, but... he means you're a Kotoko supporter. <laughs> <laughs> James, how are you doing? I'm alright. How are you doing? I'm good. You always look like all dapper. I don't know. Like you're shining. Yeah, it's Banco and Ukros to you all day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How was life for you growing up as a young boy? As a young boy, I mean. Between which age? Uh, I've, let's I've, say, growing up, let's say, maybe between the ages of 10, uh, let's say that's 20. That's when I think I was the most mischievous. I, uh, it was a bit tough for me because my mother at the time wasn't in town. Oh. And so I had to keep living with, you know, um, parents, uh, some relatives. Okay. And when they get out of me, you know, they ship me off onto the next and onto the next. I, I, I was quite stubborn. So oh. um, it, I would say my grandma, you know, took very bold steps in trying to make me, you know, the sort of person that I am because my mom had work, had to work outside and so I, I, I would say she did a good job. It was quite tough because, you know, at that age, that's when we are the most rebellious, you know, mm -hmm. trying to figure out what the whole world is about, what's there to do. I wanted to learn my mistakes for myself, yeah. you know, but they didn't even allow me to 
to make those mistakes. So I think that's where the rebellion and all of that came. But I mean, for the most part, I think I was just being a kid. So. Yeah. I mean, in what you're saying, you just kept on saying, my mom, my mom. What yeah. about your dad? I mean, usually it's the dads who take care of the, the oh, guys, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. discipline well, them and all that. So why? Why not dad? And unfortunately enough for me, I, I lost my dad when I was just about a month old. A month? So, yeah, so I don't, I don't have any memories of my dad. Like, to say my, I went here with my dad or my dad did this. Of course, I mean, oh. I, I, I was a baby. So my eyes were not even... I didn't know what was going on around me. So I never had any relationship with my dad. So, yeah, my, my dad has never been in the picture. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I'm not taking any credit for my, away from my mom. Mm -hmm. I think she did a fantastic job. When she was in and when she was away, you know, we, we spoke literally every day. Mm. And she makes it easy for me to tell her stuff about my problems, what I'm facing, what I want. And so I think she assumed the role of a father figure as well. So I, mm. I, I, didn't, I didn't really feel the void. Do, do you have any crazy childhood you like to remember? Like something you did back then that was crazy. When you look back, you're like, ah, uh, do this. Well, there's a lot to, I have to really rack my brains through it. But <laughs> I'd like to hear maybe one. If I just, if, okay, just one. Okay, so maybe one from secondary school. From secondary school? Yes. Oh, you know, okay. So you know how, um, let's say, Agri Memorial or maybe Ghana National, mm -hmm. they have all of these entertainment stuff that they do on Saturdays or the, I, I don't know, they call it freak or mm -hmm, whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we take the uniforms from the school from our friends who are in those schools. We wear it and then we go in the night because that's where the girls are. I, I went to a boys' school, I went to St. Augustine's. <laughs> that was no fun. Sometimes, you know, you need a little bit of interaction with the girls. So we take, we brought their uniforms and then we wear it to the freaks and it's like we belong. Even if their teachers are around, they, they still wouldn't know who we are. But there was this time that on our way back, mm -hmm. we got caught because I think we were going to the wrong direction. Not wrong direction, I mean, we're leaving. Mm -hmm. And they were, the teachers were wondering where we were going. They asked us which class we, we were in or something like that. And I think someone said Arts 2. And at that time, I think they only had Arts 1. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, we blew our own cover. So we said, oh, we should just come and help them carry certain things. So I, I knew, <laughs> I knew that we would come. So I was selling the gas. I was spreading the gas. Smoke. Charlie, let's go, let's go, let's go. Nah, man, this, this, this is not real. Let's go, let's go. But you know, some, some of the guys who are dull, you know, they were like, nah, let's go if we do it. So we all decided to go because if I run away, they are going to end up telling on us anyway. So, mm. yeah, we, we, we ended up getting suspended for that. But <laughs> all things being go, we came back. Of and course, like, yeah, you yeah. came back. <laughs> I mean, did you get into acting because you wanted to or you got into it by accident? I, I've always had the passion to be a radio person. Oh. Yeah, I, it, was, it was a childhood... Um, Passion, the childhood thing. At the time, I think we were listening to Tommy and Anforsen. Okay. Yeah, Joy and FM. yeah, yeah, Joy FM. So I just liked how he went about the whole thing. So I'll come home, slot in a cassette, one of my mom's favorite cassettes in the radio, in the tape, and I sort of figured out a way to turn down the volume and talk and mimic, like, you know, how Tommy does sort of mm -hmm. how the radio presenters do it. And that's how it sort of started. The acting thing came along the line when I was auditioning for TV shows at the time, because mm. I think most of my family members realized that I was into those kind of stuff. So when they see adverts on TV, they tell me about it. Mm. So I go following, I go chasing. So in the process of um, auditioning for a part, yeah. was when I met a female friend. Well, she wasn't a friend. She, I think she was part of the production people. And she told me about a, a role that was coming up, and if I would be mm. interested in auditioning for it. It wasn't really my thing, but... I think I was driving around in town and I just said, you know, let me just give it a shot. And then it, it just happened. Yeah. When you were talking, you said you used to listen to Tommy Anna and Force. Yeah. And that was on Joy FM. Yeah. And then you had the opportunity to probably work at Multimedia. At the, yeah. And how did that make you feel? I mean, you're listening to the man and now you are with the station Yo, you and have, you're doing you one no or two idea. things. You have no idea. <laughs> I was over the moon. Like, I, I, could, I couldn't believe it. But when I started... I didn't just start by going on air, yeah. you know, I, I had to get in some way, somehow. I just knew I had to get in. So um, I, I was able to get in and I don't know how it happened, mm -hmm. but as time went on, I think they were looking for someone who could read announcements yeah. on Joy. Yeah. And I was like, hey guys, you know what? I can do it. <laughs> I mean, I can read, you can hear me out and see mm -hmm. if you like what you hear and then, you know, let's start from there. And that's how I started. So I started reading the announcements. And I think they liked how I was reading it. 
and then they decided to give me an entertainment segment mm -hmm. a bit on uh, Bola Ray's show okay. in the drive time and yeah. it was great like you know I, I was jumping everywhere and then they did a topsy turvy and they had me in reading the 6 p.m. news or something like that. I forgot who I read it with, whether it was Bolare or it was DJ Black. Mm -hmm. And they realized that, you know, I, they, they think maybe I, I you could can do, do it. it. So they gave me a gig now at Hits of Fame. It was my own music show. It was a four hour music show. Okay. And you don't, I don't want to talk about it. I mean, I'm sure you know, I was ecstatic. Like it was, it was just crazy. I, I felt like, you know, everything has just begun for me. Like, I mean, there's only one way forward. Just get better and get better until you know, the whole call about this movie thing came in and I realized that maybe I need to take off, I need to take my foot off the gas pedal a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, a little bird whispered to me that you and uh, Sadiq, CEO of Dream Music Awards. Which breed? Uh, the breed, no, is a uh, low floor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you and CEO of uh, Three Music Awards, Sadiq, yeah, yeah. were more of like working together. You, yeah, know, you guys yeah. look a bit alike though. Well, like, well, like brothers, I, I, I think if my dad was still around, I'll probably be asking him questions. My, my mom, I'll leave her out, out of the picture. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we, we, we had, it was like a childhood dream, you know. Uh, we, we became very close friends when we were in secondary school. Mm -hmm. And we were all about that, always chasing gigs like that, you know, trying to get into their showbiz and stuff like that. So it so happened that we all ended up there. And then, you know, I, I think even eventually he became the programs manager as well for Hits FM. It was a huge deal. So um, one thing just turn into another and then another and now here we are he's 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 he's, he's doing good things as well mm. i know that when you got into acting i mean i've seen a couple of movies here and there but there was one time you made a comment about Toto dk oh my word <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you've always wanted to be in the movie with her no, no I, I wouldn't say that it's it's how i said it i think it was one of the very early interviews that i granted and they were asking how I felt, you know, um, about acting, especially along with, um, what you call it, Tuntu. Tuntu. And I, I was just trying to explain it. This, this is someone that I've been watching on TV the whole time, you know. And um, I, I have a scene with her, and the very first scene I have with her, it's, it's a romantic scene. Mm. Like, it, it's not easy. It's not like I'm alone with her in a room, you know, just like we're here. You know, there's a... Yeah, like so imagine yeah so imagine a setup like this and there's this the bed and we're about to do it the light so bright on you and you know you have to get in there so i couldn't the 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 um director had to pull me to the side and go like yo bro you need to this is your chance man. you need to try and make an impact you know don't make it look like you're you're, you're shy or you're you know but I, I was being very natural about it so i was just talking about the fact that i didn't think it was going to happen so soon that I'm going to end up having romantic scenes like that with, you know, someone like Tonto. And then you know how these bloggers carry it. They just wow. took it somewhere else and they were so focused on the case and all of that. But that wasn't it. I just said in passing that, yeah. I mean, imagine kissing, kissing Tonto, someone mm -hmm. you've been watching on TV mm -hmm. all this while and it's your first scene with her and it was a bit too fast. Maybe they should have structured in such a way that we'll do other scenes first <laughs> and get conversation with each other. Then you can bring in the, yeah. the romantic scenes. But yeah, it is what it is. So probably there were some heartbeats. Yeah, hey, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the same. I'm, every time I lift my head and I look to the right, there's everybody looking at me like that. So it's, it, it wasn't... What I say romantic scene, this very one was very heated. You know, so... And I wasn't used to all of these kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to pretend and act like you're actually doing it because it's my job to make whoever that's watching outside know that it's, it's, it's real. So, do you understand? Yeah. It, it, it was quite tough, but yeah. <laughs> I bet Barowski would have done it. <laughs> Hands down. Close your eyes. They, they go toss it with small jaw, small jaw. When you enter, you understand that it's not a joke. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's James, not how did you get into politics? I mean... I, I, am I? Am I in politics? Probably. I've seen I'm, you. Okay, if, if, if uh, I, mean, I mean, for some part, for mm -hmm. some part, I, I, I jumped on the on the on the wagon that I believed in their um, vision and whatever it is that they they had with regards to the developments of the mm. country. So, I, I wouldn't say I am a politician. Okay, I, I'm 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 still patriotic. I just threw my weight behind someone that I felt we share the same you know beliefs mm. or the same agenda with regards to the development of the country, and pretty much that's it. Mm. There were speculations that you were paid to do that. That I was paid to, to do that. To support. But if, but if I was, what's wrong with that? Oh, so you're cool with it? No, no, I said if. If. But even, you know, I, I think 
Ghanaians always like to look outside and not really pay attention into what I was doing. I mean, everyone has their right to support whoever they choose to support. Mm -hmm. Why would you have a problem with who I support? If you're supporting something else, I don't necessarily have to support what you are supporting. We have diverse views. So if I am supporting something and you're not happy with it, then I, 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 don't, I don't know. The same way you have your right to support whoever you choose to support, I have mine. I don't hold anything against anyone who supports A, B, C, D, or E. So you shouldn't have a Any problem, problem with, yeah, yeah. with, with masks. But I mean, you know you're all in the industry, and one would say that if somebody is moving from the industry, that's the movie industry, to maybe do something with any political party, maybe everyone should rally behind them. Were you disappointed that, I mean, you were supporting your brother, John Dumelo, yeah. and the likes of Calibos, Bismarck, the Joe, yeah. Prince were all supporting, you know, the, yeah, the other party. Were you disappointed? Not at all. I wouldn't say that. Just like I said, everyone has their rights to, to make their own choices. It's their choice. I wouldn't say I was surprised or disappointed or this. Or... Everyone has their stand. Yeah. The mere fact that we're all in the industry doesn't necessarily mean that if you like Jolof, just because John is eating jollof, you have to go and eat jollof. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have been hanging out here with the actor James Gardner. We're going for a quick break. When we come back, it's time for Celebrity Charade. Right. It's the Darren Avio Show. This is the Dorian Avio Show, and well, before we went on the break, I told you that we we're going to play a celebrity charade, and of course, today, Varoski is not here. He's rather seated there. What's up? <clears throat> Myself and James Gardner are supposed to pick um, three papers each, and we'll look on that. Varoski, whatever we put here, you're supposed to give answers to it. Please, focus. Yeah, you should try your best, because... That's it, man. You can't draw to save your life. <laughs> okay, let me quickly pick that up. So James is going to pick three, and then I'll also pick three. I pick three at once? Yes. Yep. Ah, you're picking... Hey. <laughs> Why are you picking the ones under? <laughs> ah. <laughs> now he, he just scared me. Okay, two, three. Men first. Ladies first. <clears throat> so what, he's supposed to guess what we draw? Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, hey. Kwame okay. Eugene. <laughs> he got it right. Wait, wait, wait. Are you kidding me? How? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. First of all, this thing looks like a roofing sheet. That's, that's number one. So his, why do you just hear looks like a roofing sheet? <laughs> James, your turn now. Are you guys kidding me right now? Ay, 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 Kufuado. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the president will not like this. Okay, let me take. Uh, hmm. 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 Wait, wait, wait. I know this one. This is manifest. <laughs> Satawali. <laughs> hey. huh? Yo, 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 yo. What's your writing? No, come on, man. You're supposed to draw. But this, but this is giving the clues. What? No, 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 no. That's no. That's it, right. It's all part of it. Yeah, but then if you write that, they are giving it away. Uh, yes. I am giving it away. Ready, me doing question. Really? Ah, okay. Really? So I got it. Really? I got it right. That's cheating. I, I, it's not cheating. That's cheating. But wait, uh, what is that one? This one. On Calibur's head. Exactly. His hat. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's carrying a car.
Shatawale. Thank you. <laughs> Why didn't I pick that? <laughs> Don't write it. No, yeah, Just draw. no, you can't. Just write. draw. Yes. <laughs> Sugar kid. <laughs> <laughs> Manifest. Set a clock. Ambuli. Terrible no. ambuli. No. Ajekuti. Varoski, try, try. The color won't change anything. You're coloring the hearts like. Varoski, try. If you color the hearts, it will now make him understand. Varoski, try, la. Oh. Wait, is this, is this time? Because I think. I don't think it's is it kitty? Or show you rush a ho. Or just single it. Six pack. Oh. Kitty. No. And I'm net no adro. So unless unless pata pao. Who is that? Hi. This one there you lose. I know. Oh. This is very dark. Uh-huh. And where's single it? Six packs. Uh -huh. Oh. So don't make me lose this now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think your time is over. I think time is up. Yeah, this one, yeah. 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 Who is that? Who was that? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but like this man. <laughs> but Sakodia likes. Um, he has um, his punk here. Then he has his dark glasses, <laughs> and then uh, you know he has some slices spaghetti. Like no. Sack, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sack, don't worry, eh? you know. <laughs> I'm so sorry, James had to win this. No, it's but, not. He has the last one. Uh, I have one more. No. I have one more. Because <laughs> this one, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but he was holding a microphone too. I can't. Spongebob. Just Spongebob. Hmm. Well, see, this one, you will see, you will know. Ah, James, why are you drawing the thing so nice? Hmm. <laughs> Afro? <laughs> so, uh-huh. Hey! <laughs> Artist, yes. medical. Dira de Quasiata. So what do you say? What do you say? Not do well. He, he, he didn't. He didn't but know what. I don't think Sakoda will be proud of what. <laughs> are, are you kidding me? What you do and what I do. Who was closer? <laughs> well, it goes a long way to show that even though I studied visual arts, I think uh, James did it. It, it was. <laughs> and James did a better job. It and I'll give. It wasn't visual enough. It wasn't visual enough. <laughs> and I'll give thumbs up to actor. James Gardner. Of course, we've been hanging here with him. He's been amazing. And well, we look forward to seeing greater things for actor James Gardner. So when we come back from this break, it's time for Will of Misfortune. And now, welcome to the Wheel of Misfortune. You get three spins where you can win 500 cities a spin. Or you can win a fantastic, beautiful prize of absolute misfortune. When you spin and you lose, Sikano, ah, shit. Welcome back.
back. It's still the Dorina View Show, and now it's time to play the Wheel of Misfortune. <laughs> DJ Varaski. Yeah, don't worry. Today, what number are we playing? What lot two number do you want us to? Um. Can we can we just have number thirteen? Please look under your seats. And number 13 should join me here. Okay. Number 13. Who's number 13? Woo! Oh, wow. Hey, beautiful. Hi. What's your name? I'm Benita. Benita, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, Benita, we are going to play a quick game here. Uh, this is the Wheel of Misfortune. I'm going to take you through what you can win for yourself and maybe the audience. So 500 Ghana CDs for the stats. If you're able to spin three times, you get to win 1,500 Ghana CDs. Now, when you spin and it falls on Tada, you win an amazing prize from Samsung and some for that of the audience as well. And then there's 500 Ghana cities with a red ink crossed. When it falls there, negative 500 cities. So nothing there. And then when it falls on game over, everything you have done, zero cost 90. There's nothing for you. Are you ready to spin? Yes, I am. Okay, so now let's take our first spin. Okay, so Benita so has won 500 Ghana cities for herself. It's okay. It's okay. Benita, let's take our second spin. Benita, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, we're going to take our third spin. I mean, the 500 you won is... It has, thank you. So now, let's take our third spin. It's a beyond a beyond a beyond a beyond a In fact, Benita is a blessing, and Benita, you get to win an amazing gift from Samsung, and that for our studio audience as well. Thank you so much, Benita, and congratulations. And congratulations to you, the audience, as well. Yeah. Woo, Varoski. I think it's kind of shit, but... It's shit, but it's like... I think... I mean, she has to give me something, because I chose her number. <laughs> Isn't it? All right, I mean, she was lucky. <laughs> Well, on that note, that'll be it for the Dorian of your show. Today's edition, a very big thank you to Lakopoi for putting up this beautiful outfit for me. And made for beauty, my lovely looks. I love it. And, of course, Maple Leaf Hotel as well for giving us delicious meals. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>